Hello everybody and welcome to a new video for Luck Poker. Today we are going to analyze some aggregated reports and I will focus on the spot small blind versus button. So for whoever doesn't know what an aggregated report is, I think the best I can do is to show you how they work because that's the easiest way and the simplest way to understand their uh, functionality. And uh, let's do it with GTO Wizard, which mm, does a very good job in, in, in implementing them. So we can just go to reports and I can select a spot. For example, I will set for today a small blind versus button in a tribute pot. And what you will see now is a list of all the possible boards. And on the right side of it, there is a bar which express the frequency of my C bets and checks, at least the theoretically optimal ones. So by using aggregated reports, what I can do is to check my strategy all over the board. I can, let's say, choose specific boards or kind of board and see how frequency and how big I am betting or I should bet. But also I can see in general in this specific spot, small blind versus button, how much uh, the small blind is in this time, in this moment, C betting. So we can see, for example, that I will simplify with one sizing to make it easier to understand as of now. We can see that in general, uh, the small blind should C bet about 60% of the times when uh, he's playing a tribal pot versus the button. And this is the general one. Of course, we have boards in which we are going to bet more frequently and boards in which we are betting less frequently. For example, we can try to see which are the boards that the small blind should bet more frequently. Well, we, we just click here and we see all these kind of boards. They are in order and we can see a lot of boards in which is obviously the best choice to just bet every single time. And we see that we have mainly king high boards, a lot of a lot of paired boards, especially with a high card. We have this queen jack 10, which of course gives gives us a big advantage because we have a king, we have queens and jacks that we doesn't always have. And uh, we have a lot of, you know, you can just give a look and we see that mainly the high card, king high, let's say, or very dry high card boards are all here, the ones which are uh, most frequently c -betted. We can also do the opposite. We can also check which are the boards instead of we're usually checking. And as we see by pressing the check, we see a lot of boards in which we are not even considering c -betting. A lot of them are monotone boards, especially the uh, medium ones, but there are also some exceptions. So let's say that something we could do in our strategy is to uh, implement a check range on monotone boards. I think is a good, uh, let's say, simplification because usually that's what's gonna happen on those kind of boards. But also we see these medium super connected boards like nine eight seven six six seven six five with a flush throw. There is also some A sideboard like A eight nine with a flush throw, and uh, but all in all, these boards which are checked at a high frequency, they all look like nine seven six with a flush throw things like this. Um, there are few rainbow boards. We can see the A nine eight still checked over eighty percent of the times, and we probably could simplify that in a check range. Um, but the few boards which are still checked at a very high frequency potentially range are similar in the way they are made like nine six uh, seven rainbow eight seven five rainbow so we see that when we fail when, when the flop is something that is medium and connected the small blind really doesn't like to see that and that's something we should keep in mind also we have uh we can with this choose uh, the bet sizing that we use. I will simplify it in medium, uh, large and small bet sizes. And we can see where are we betting mainly small and we will see that a lot of the boards where we're betting small have high cards. Mm -hmm. 
in general if the bird is ace or king high our favorite size is by far the one third pot bet and as you can see not all but most of these birds are also um, bet uh, at a very high frequency so uh, typically we we can say that in general if you bet with a high frequency if we are on a board where the frequency of betting is high we are of course choosing a very small bet size it makes sense because we are betting with weaker hands in general our betting range includes way more medium and low value hands and so it makes sense for us to bet small as simple as that we can also see which are the boards where we prefer to bet medium for example and now we see board there are some some weird situations but something very interesting is that a lot of pair boards are actually bet with the medium size bet but apart from those we see uh, a lot of those kind of uh, uh, let's say medium not super connected boards things like 10 9 3 with a flush throw or uh, 10 and 2 is the same of course we also have things let me see if i see something else like yeah this like uh, there is a lot of this 10 9 x also queen 10x these kind of things they, they like to bet half pot a lot there are also spots in which technically speaking we'd like to bet big and for big uh, as we see the sovereign means 75 percent of the pot and those kind of boards are things like well there are some pair boards which of course are a bit of an exception there are those medium and unconnected boards 10 6 3 off 10 6 deuce off 10 4 2 off <clears throat> and those are the boards in which our over pair advantage uh, is the strongest and that's in my opinion why we choose to, to bet this big we have uh, a lot of very strong hands here villain doesn't and so we, we are definitely gonna bet big because our our value range wants to bet big and that's pretty much it but you see um, there are some patterns here that we can see and you know even if there's a flush through it doesn't matter much you know uh more like 10 6 deals with the flush through still wants a bit big in general but yeah if you want to pick three sizing for our flop strategy i think that's how we should usually try to 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 make it so we have the small sizing for those boards that we're betting with a very high frequency and typically with high cards they prefer the small bet and high frequency uh, we bet medium <coughs> typically on uh, medium boards so you see this board is medium height med medium height and sort of connected but not too much and that, that's fine um, and also we like to bet large on instead those medium disconnected boards on some also paired boards as well and keep in mind don't forget to check range on those very heavily connected medium boards i think this is a course it's a simplification we will have to study some spots in detail but i think it's a good starting point and i think that's why it's important to to, to take a look at aggregated reports when we start studying a spot in one of the next videos i will start playing some of these spots and with a trainer and we'll see if our strategy kind of fits with uh, what we just saw